Okay. <laughs> All right, hey everybody. Uh, still working out some uh, technical kinks, uh, but the good news is I went a little crazy today and I actually hooked up my iPad to the TV. I hooked up a better sound system uh, through my actual DSLR camera. So I'm hoping the quality today will be much better. Also the audio, we're gonna double check before we get started. Uh, my wife's gonna double check to make sure that the sound is okay on YouTube. And if you're watching me on Instagram Live, uh, welcome. That should be okay because it's going through my phone. But I want to welcome everybody back. And also today, uh, just like we did the other day, if you uh, want the worksheets for today, and you, so you follow along, whether you want to download the PDFs onto your iPad or your phone or anything like that, uh, you can go to colormemozart.com and it's today's post. If you scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, you'll see it's the latest post. It actually says online music lesson, March 25th. And if you click on that, you'll have Again, all the PDFs, and then after the video's finished, I'll be posting uh, the video that we filmed today. So, hope you guys are safe and enjoying. I know it's a crazy time, it's a very uh, surreal time, but I hope in as much as you can, uh, looking at the positive side of spending time with your family, spending time with your loved ones, make sure everybody's safe, don't go out if you don't have to, of course, we know the rules. And um, so, we want to do a little bit of music time. We're going to start as always singing. Anytime you do a music time, music education time at home or in school, you want to start by warming up and singing a little bit. Uh, so we're going to do If You're Happy and You Know It, which is great because we can clap our hands, we can stomp our feet, we could say hooray. So we get to enjoy a couple of movements as well. So we're going to start. <laughs> Clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, and you really want to show it, if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. Clap. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. Stomp, stomp. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. Stomp, stomp. If you're happy and you know it, and you really want to show if you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. Stomp, stomp. If you're happy and you know it, shout hooray, hooray. If you're happy and you know it, shout hooray, hooray. If you're happy and you know it, you really want to show it. If you're happy and you know it, shout hooray, hooray. Now we're going to do all three, so get ready. If you're happy and you know it, do all three. Clap, clap, stomp, stomp, hooray. If you're happy and you know it, do all three. Clap, clap, stomp, stomp, hooray. If you're happy and you know it, you really want to show it. Be and you know it. Do all three. Clap, clap, stomp, stomp. Hooray. Excellent. Awesome. That's awesome. I love songs that involve a little movement like Wheels on the Bus and this one. Those are just great. I enjoy those a lot. Now we're going to do, since today we're going to be learning Mary Had a Little Lamb on the piano or if you have the xylophone with you, we're going to be, actually, we'll sing it again and then we'll review a little bit about what we did on Monday. Just make sure you have those three notes down and then we'll get started. I'll show you on the screen so you can see it nice and big. Okay, so let's uh, sing it. Ready? Mary had a little lamb, little lamb, little lamb. Mary had a little lamb whose fleece was white as snow. And everywhere that Mary went, Mary went, Mary went. Everywhere that Mary went, the lamb was sure to go. And that's a great song to start with because it only has those three notes. And I say three with a little trepidation only because there's one G in there but it's no big deal, it's really easy. I'll, I'll walk you guys through it. So let's review uh, what we did on Monday, right? We learned our C, D, and E. And if you remember, let me sure, let me get my notes here. So if we have, let me, where's our C? Here it is, okay. So we remember that our C is, let's zoom in here. Where is it? And there it is. So our C is a red square. Right, so every time we see a red square, the color red, the shape square, we know that that's a C. And then we'll go over it really quick where that is on the piano, but I just wanna go over the notes really quick. Then we move on to our D. And if you remember, D is our triangle, the shape of a triangle. It's the color, what color is that? That's the color orange. 
and the note that a triangle and an orange triangle is, is a D. So great job with that. And then finally, our third note that we're going to need is our, what shape is that? That's a circle. That's right. Great job. And what color is the circle? The color is yellow, right? So great. So a yellow circle is the note E. Excellent. So we have the three shapes that we're going to need today. We have our square, our triangle, and our circle. And those notes are, let me turn around so you see them correctly in the camera. There we go. So we have C, D, and E. So we'll go over really quick what that is on the piano. If you remember what we did on Monday, the piano, as much as it looks like there's, well, actually I have a picture of a piano. I know pianos look a little intimidating because there's so many notes. So you think there's tons of notes. But in music, we actually know, we did it the other day, how many notes are in the musical language? We only have seven, right? And we've learned three so far. We learned C, D, and E, so that means we only have four to go. So the way we figure out where C, D, and E are on the piano is we look at where the two black keys on the piano are. And if you see the pattern, I hope this isn't blocking it. Let me see if I can move it up a little bit. So we have three, then two, then three, then two, then three, then two black keys. That's how the series and the sequence works on a piano. That's how we know where they all are. So if we go and we play all the sets of two black keys, then we have, we're here, then we have two black keys here, and then two black keys here, and then there's one last set up here. Once we get to those place, those two sets of black keys, then we know to the, I think I have a better, uh, oh yeah, here it is, this is easier to see. Okay, so we have two black keys, and to the left of those two black keys, we have a C, right? There's a red square, that's how we know it's C. And two black keys to the left. If we go to the center of the two black keys, we see our red, tri I'm sorry, our orange triangle, and that's our D note. Again, every time the center note of two black keys, then you know that it's a D, every time on the piano. No, there's no exception to that. And then finally, two black keys to the right, our yellow circle, that's our E. So we have our C, D, E. And what I like to do with students all the time is to play the C, D, E's on the keyboard, right? So I'll label them here. Let's label them here together. So we have red. So I'll put a C. Oh, that's, that's, way, too, that's way too thick. Let's do a thinner one. Let's get red here. There's a C. Let's get an orange, a nice orange. There's a D, and then let's do, okay, and there's our E. Let's get rid of that. Okay, perfect. So we have our C, D, and E on the two black keys. So now you can play all the C, D, E's on the keyboard. So I'm gonna go down to this low set of two black keys, and I'm gonna go C, D, E. Then I move up to the next set of two black keys, C, D, E. Then we move up again, C, D, E. Keep going, C, D, E. Again, C, D, E. We have two more sets, then two black keys again, C, D, E. And then finally the last, C, D, E. So that takes care of all of our keys on the keyboard, right? Our C, D, E on the sets of two, C, D, E on the sets of two, C, D, E on the sets of two. What winds up happening over time, which is awesome with music, just like any other language when you start learning it, at first it seems really it's almost impossible. You're like, how am I gonna recognize these words, these symbols, these phrases so quickly? But you do. It's just like any other language. The more you see it, the more you go over it, the more you repeat it, the easier it is to identify. And pretty soon, what began as some uh, you know, random group of white and black keys, all of a sudden they pop out at you. You know exactly where all the E's are and the D's are and the C's are. So it's, it's actually pretty awesome. And so now we have those three notes. So those are the only three that we're gonna need uh, mostly for Mary Had a Little Lamb. And I also want to point out, if you do have the xylophone with you, it's exactly the same thing. This is a C, and this is a D, and this is an E. They're exactly the same three notes. So what we're going to do today also applies to the Color Me Mozart xylophone, if you have it, because the colors and the notes are exactly in tune with the keyboard or the guitar or whatever else you might be playing along with. So let's go to today's lesson. I have these ready here. I've also posted a worksheet for today, um, which is a lot of fun. If you notice, you have you could trace 
the, uh, the letters here. You have a tracing in, in capital and lowercase and the shapes. And make sure if you do that, if you print it out to do a little art exercise, to do it in the correct color, right? If you're going to draw your C's and the square, make sure it's red. When you draw your D's, your lowercase D and the triangle, make sure it's orange, of course. And then if you're doing your E's, we know what color it is now because it's getting easier and easier each time. What color is E? Yellow. Excellent. And then on the bottom here, this is really fun. This is a, a listening exercise. So first you can go over what these instruments are, which we should know by now. This is the piano, right? This is actually a baby grand piano. They're beautiful, right? They don't always fit. We have an apartment here in New York City, so it's not easy to put a baby grand. But I have an electronic keyboard. But they all function the same way. I mentioned that the other day during the lesson. It doesn't matter if it's a toy keyboard. It doesn't matter if it's a baby grand piano or a Steinway D that's on Carnegie Hall or a keyboard like this, or even a keyboard that has less keys. Some keyboards have less keys. They all function the same way. Everything that we're learning today, the two black keys, the three black keys, the C, Ds, and Es, it applies to every keyboard, no matter how big or small the keys are. And that's one great thing about music is that it's universal. It, it's not, it doesn't apply to just one keyboard and doesn't apply to another. And then on the bottom here you have, and again, I hope it's not covering it. It might be. Let me see if I can raise it here. Um, you have listening exercises, pieces that are uh, wonderful examples of piano. So in this case, it's Beethoven for Elise, which many of you know. So that's a beautiful piece that you can listen to. And that'll have the link to listen to it on, on YouTube. And then we have Scott Joplin, the entertainer. I haven't played that in a while. That's another beautiful piece by Scott Joplin, ragtime piano. So these are just a couple examples uh, to listen to. And the point of these listening examples is because I want to encourage you to listen to great music. Um, a lot, since we have so much access to YouTube, a lot of times we tend to listen to the same type of music, and that happens to me too, kind of I stick with the type of music that I like. But I, one of the great things about becoming uh, just a great musician and just listening to a lot of great music is listening to different styles of music. And perhaps your, your, your son or your daughter might not love each example. Maybe they don't like Scott Joplin. Maybe they don't like Beethoven. Maybe they don't like classical. But I think it's important to listen to it because you might be surprised. I have a lot of students that they actually blow me away. They'll, they'll tell me they'll love, you know, The Doors or Led Zeppelin. And it's way past their time, right? They're, they're you know, eight, ten years old, and they're listening to amazing music. And so it's, it's really important, in my opinion, to listen to a lot of different styles of music in your home. And then it sparks up a nice conversation. What did you like about this song. What didn't you like about this piece? Uh, what instrument is that? So I just think it's a really important thing to do as a budding musicians. And then you have the guitar here, which I love the guitar. I also play the guitar and I, I love it. You have a couple of great examples to listen to here as well. Django Reinhardt and Joaquin Rodrigo. You have a, a classical example and a jazz, kind of a gypsy jazz example by Django Reinhardt, which is super fun. Okay, so that takes care of the worksheet. Again, you can print that out and really enjoy. And here we have Mary had a little lamb. So let me see how much I can zoom in here. Okay. So we're going to do, I'm going to circle what we're going to do. We're going to do something. I'll try to circle it so it's not. Okay. That's too big. There we go. Okay. That should be easy to understand. Okay. So we're just going to do, in music, you always want to break up uh, a song into smaller pieces because it's kind of tempting. People always try to start from beginning to end, and then it gets really frustrating. That's not worth it at all because it takes you much longer. So we're going to break it up into really small sections. So I'm going to zoom into just that section. And so here we are. We know our notes, right? E, D, C, D, E, E, E. And you might be asking, why don't I put the letters in there? There's a really great answer for that. What, the reason I don't do that is because I don't want you to rely on the letters. Again, we're trying to learn a, a different language, right? It's, it's just like spelling out a word phonetically. That's great and helps out a little bit in the beginning. But what I found over time with students is that they rely too much on the letters and they're not actually kind of connecting. Okay, that's supposed to be an E and they reference that. And remember, ideally what we're going to do in the future as we move forward is actually learn how to real, read real music with uh, the treble clef and the staff. So these are the basic building blocks for them to associate a symbol to sound, right? So we don't want to give the letters and have them rely on just the letters. Then it's kind of hard to wean ourselves off of that. So we're going to start E, D, C, D, E, E, E. That's our beginning, right? And I always like to start off counting four nice and slow. So we're going to do one, two, three, four. E, D, 
C, D, E, E, E. Great. Let's try that again. One, two, three, four. E, D, C, D, E, E, E. Now we could try singing along. So we have one, two, three, four. Mary had a little lamb. Excellent. Okay, you repeat that as many times as you need to in order for it to sound smooth. And then we can move on. Let me delete that little green line. We'll zoom out. Now, this is the part that I was saying it's a little, a little bit different only because we have these blue notes and we haven't learned that yet. So it's no big deal. Those are G's, so I can tell you that those are G's right now. And we'll learn it in a couple of days in the next few lessons. But for now, we'll, we'll do this. I'll, ma I'll make your life a lot easier. We're going to play. Um, and we'll, do, we'll do the G's because we, we can figure it out, right? We can definitely figure it out. So if we have, if we learned, let's go, let's go to the, uh, I changed my mind. Let's actually do it. So I'll show you where the note is. Okay. So here's our two. Let's see if I got to erase that. Okay, great. So here's our C, right? We have our C over here. Then we have our orange D. Then we have our yellow E. And as you would guess, after E comes F and then our blue G. So it's really not, it's not that far away. And again, we only need two of them. So this is, we're just going to focus on adding those two G's above, above E. If you can't do it, it's no big deal at all. We're not going to stress out about it. Like I said, luckily Mary, Ho Mary had a little lamp is mostly um, C, D's and E's. Okay. So here we go. So now we're on little lamb. So we have D, 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 and then E, G, G. So we're going to try that. Ready? One, two, three, go. D, 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 E, G, G. I'm going to try that again. One, two, ready, go. D, 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 E, G, G. Now we're going to try it singing. Ready? One, two, ready, go. Little lamb, little lamb. Excellent. And now we're going to put the entire first line together. Again, if you can't do it just yet, that's totally fine. But we, this is what we want to build up to. And you want to break it into those small sections and then put it together. So we're going to start right from the beginning. And I'll try to follow with my finger. Ready? One, two, three, four. E, D, C, D, E, 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 D, 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 E, G, G. Excellent. Now we're going to try to sing it. One, two, ready, go. Mary had a little lamb, little lamb, little lamb. Excellent. And you would continue the... The great thing about this, check this out. A lot of times we don't notice it. This is exactly the same as this, right? Those are identical. So if you practice this, you know that part. And then the only thing you would have left is the ending, which again also only uses those three notes. We have C, D, D, E, D, C. Wide as snow. Pretty straightforward. That's why, again, I love about music is that once you have one section, more often than not, there's another section that you've already completed because it repeats a lot. Music is very repetitive, whether it's a verse or a chorus melody, um, even in classical music, uh, even the, the Beethoven. That repeats so many times in the piece. So once you learn that first section, you have about 30% of the piece ready to go. And also as well, if you have the, um, the xylophone, it functions exactly the same way, right? We follow the colors. And I do encourage you to say the notes when you can, to sing along when you can, because again, it adds an extra layer um, of skill. And, and that way, as we progress towards reading music on uh, real music, you know, with notes and the lines and the musical staff, um, it gets easier. So let's try it on the xylophone. We'll try that same first line. So one, two, three, go. E, D, C, D, E, 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 D, D, D. E, G, G. We'll finish it up. Mary had a little lamb whose fleece was white as snow. Excellent. Pretty easy, right? That's what I love, that it's something that's 
easy to, to accomplish if you just break it down into smaller segments. So what did we learn today, right? We reviewed our C, D, and E notes with our bonus G note, which we weren't even expecting. You know how to find all your sets of two black keys on the piano. You can find all your C, D, E's on the piano. You can know, you know where your C, D, E is on the xylophone. And you, we've learned to play Mary, Mary Had a Little Lamp with actual notes. These are the same notes that would be, again, on a violin, on a piano, on a guitar. Even though this looks like, oh, it's just colors and it's silly, these are real notes. So as we get better and better, we'll learn how to read real music. So this, you guys did a great job today. I hope you had a lot of fun. Make sure you print out all the worksheets that you see there, especially do the listening exercises. There's the xylophone, so you know what all the notes on the xylophone are as well. And I did post on Instagram, um, the, the question, uh, can you name me some famous pianists, right? Or piano players. And we have some great answers, right? We have, we have Mozart. We have someone mentioned Chopin. One, one answer was great. It was Katia. Oh my God. I forgot her name, a famous classical pianist. She was wonderful. I had never heard of her. I went to listen to some pieces that she played and she's phenomenal. So thank you for, I think it was Itayetsi that posted that. So thank you for sharing that. And again, I, some of the, the great, uh, piano, I love Frederick Chopin. Herbie Hancock, Billy Joel, Chris Martin from Coldplay, Alicia Keys, Stevie Wonder, Ray Charles. There are a lot of famous, and not only just famous, but wonderful, wonderful piano players that gave us amazing songs, amazing music, amazing compositions. So as always, I encourage you to listen to as much music as you can. Enjoy the music that you guys can share as a family this time. It doesn't always happen, right? With schedules are so crazy. It's something really special that as a family, you can share music, perhaps um, either mom or dad, you guys know how to play the guitar or the piano, or anything else, remember that you can strum along and sing along and really enjoy this time as much as possible. So thank you guys for joining me. I'll see you guys on Friday for our next lesson and we'll learn all the notes that are on the sets of 